Lord Howell, um, following from your presentation this morning at the Roundtable Pre-Chogham Conference, what do you think is needed to focus the UK on the Commonwealth and look beyond the EU and the current Brexit debate? Well, I think we have to first analyse and then respond to what are the trends that are actually happening in the world. Uh, and those trends are towards, uh, away from the sort of concept of the, the wheels and rims and hubs and so on, and towards a world of networks in which every country on earth, every society, many, every community is connected up with every other. And this, is, this, this is an, um, requires completely new rules. This is a new game, if you like to put it in game terms, well, it's a lot more than that. Uh, and I think the, the British utterances uh, have to change. Obviously, Brexit has, has jarred uh, the language of public debate quite severely already. And we are thinking about how we reposition Britain in this changed world. Some people say, oh, it's just a question of going back to being the 51st state of America. That, of course, is completely wrong. America is also part of the network. Uh, as is the, the rest of Europe, as is Africa, as is the Caribbean, as is uh, rising Asia. But the, the, the big forces are going to be increasingly ones that link up Britain as a great trading nation with, uh, of course, with our neighbours in Europe, but just as much, if not more so, particularly in the digital area, with the great um, powers of Asia, notably China, but also Japan and uh, um, Australia, Canada and so on. During your presentation, you talked about moving on from the old clichés. How does the Commonwealth move along that path? I think uh, everyone has got a, a role to play in trying to analyse what is really happening in the world and to develop a new narrative. I think London's got a, a lot to catch up and do because we've been busy for the last 40 years being told that uh, Europe was our destiny and frankly giving rather a cold shoulder to, to um, other members of the Commonwealth. Um, and a lot of people saying, oh, that's yesterday, it doesn't really matter, it's quite nice, but it's only a sort of glorified club and so on. That has all got to change. So I think we want to hear from London a new narrative. Um, also, I think from uh, the great leaders of the Commonwealth, from, from Delhi, Mr Modi, we want to hear the new understanding of India's international role and how it is helped or hindered by uh, the common working language of English, by very close ties in not just trade areas, but in military areas, in science, health, veterinary work, farming, all kinds of technology, uh, the law and the administration of the law, policing, crime control, and so on. There is a, an enormous amount of tying up to be done. And um, so it's got to be, it's a two-way business. It's never used just Britain suddenly saying, I'm terribly sorry, we've just remembered the Commonwealth, here we are again. Because <laughs> um, I think that's not going to play very well in a number of Commonwealth capitals. But um, we have to do more than that. We have to make a, a whole lot of practical changes, uh, some of which apply particularly in the areas of visas and travel, uh, where we're not getting it right at all at the moment. There had been some discussion about the Commonwealth Charter being held up as a beacon, but how do you encourage those parts of the Charter that are worth keeping in, as you described it, a changing world? Well, I think, you first of all, you keep it f fresh. It's not just a, ca a Charter that's been written, everyone can walk away. You keep it fresh and, indeed, keeping it up to date. Secondly, it's got to be, have constant collective support. Uh, and only one of the roles of the Secretariat, I think, should be to constantly be re-collecting, re re-collecting, reaffirmation of the values collectively. Uh, and thirdly, recognising that when there is a deviation from these values, and we spoke about some things, uh, countries will put the leader of the opposition in prison, countries that abandon the rule of law, countries that pass laws which don't fit into the modern world or modern values at all, uh, when there's a deviation, there is a, a, a serious and wide Commonwealth-supported effort to correction. Um, not uh, that worst of all things, looking as though a sort of tired Britain is going round preaching and lecturing to everybody. That, that's yesterday stuff. So it's changed and um, uh, there needs to be a much more collective approach and a set of standards from which there will be deviations, but when their deviations occur, they are spotted in a way that they wouldn't be in outside the Commonwealth network. What would be the one key thing that the UK would need to put in place ahead of Chogham 2018, in your view? Uh, one thing, well, uh, many things and, and many new narratives and many new words from our 
ministers, but I think our um, uh, handling of the student situation gives me a particular dismay. Uh, it is simply awful that we've um, the number of students from India, uh, and I haven't got the figures from uh, Pakistan and Malaysia, um, Australia, Canada, South Africa and so on, but the number from India has halved, um, more than halved, linked with a um, huge nation, which in actual population has, is half the Commonwealth, and in six of the whole human race, um, immensely dynamic in many parts, although with many social and poverty problems still. And um, we need to be partners with India in every possible way. And um, if we uh, kick their students in the teeth, uh, or appear to be doing so, or that's a perception, that is bad news. Lord Howell, thank you.